by one of his slave um, girls, women, and his children were called Francis and Archibald. And he sent them to the finest schools in America. He had money. He sent them to Oberlin College. Um, they were, they were uh, obviously mulatto children. And they became major educators here in Washington, D.C. If any of you have taken Professor James's course or Professor Miller's course, hopefully you've read Angela Grimke. She was a major writer in the Harlem Renaissance. She's the daughter of Francis Grimke. That school is named after Archibald Grimke. Did people still go there? Pardon me? Did people still go there? No, that's now the fire department of District of Columbia. Oh. That corner house where that American flag is is Madame Evita's house. Her name was Lillian Evans Tibbs. She was a major opera star in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Jesse Fawcett, one of the Harlem Renaissance poets was living in this neighborhood around the corner here. She gave her the name of Madame Ivanti. She said, Andre, to Lillian Evans Tibbs, you ain't gonna make it with the name of Lillian Evans Tibbs. I wanna give you a real name. Let's call you Madame Ivanti. And she, she adopted the name from the poet Jesse uh, Fawcett and she lived at that house right there. So you're on hallowed ground. This was an encampment of contraband African Americans running across the Potomac River, fleeing oppression from the South in the war, and they had their camps right here. This is where they stayed until the war was over, and they stayed in the alleys. Thousands of African Americans lived in tents in this neighborhood all around here. This was called Barker's Camp. And Abraham Lincoln, when he left the White House, you know, if you take this, this street right here, Vermont Avenue, you run right into the White House. So Abraham Lincoln would leave the White House. He hated the White House. He wanted to stay up at, at Walter Reed in his summer cottage. That's where he stayed most of the time. So when he took his horse and his buggy and they would come up down here through Vermont Street, he would stop here and talk to the slaves, to the uh, former slaves who were contraband in this camp. What does contraband mean? What? Something what? It's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal property. If I'm carrying around a joint in my back pocket, I'm carrying around contraband. I'm not carrying around a joint in my back pocket anymore. Anymore. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. But that's contraband. So why were they called contrabands? Because they were owned by somebody in Virginia, that's why. They were illegal property. They were living right here. And there's no mistake that Howard University was founded here. There's no mistake that this becomes Shaw. The, community, the black historic black community, and who is Shaw? What this community is named after? Shaw? Who was Shaw? Who was Shaw? Who you really should know this. It's a major. This is a major African American community called Historic Shaw. Why do we call it Historic Shaw? Close. Robert Gould Shaw. Who's seen Glory? Who's seen Glory? It's Robert Gould Shaw. He was the commander of the 54th Massachusetts. He was the commander of the 54th. His daddy was very rich. His daddy was a wealthy mill owner in Massachusetts. His daddy had the capacity to buy him out of the Civil War. $300. Give $300 to the government, your son does not have to go and fight. Who's got $300? Only millionaires have $300. Only millionaires have $300. This guy had so much money, he could have bought his son. But you know what his son said? No, Dad, thank you. I want to fight. He said, I want to fight. And he did. And he led the 54th Mass. And he believed, like, like, unlike most commanders of their, of their black troops, white commanders of their black troops, he believed that if his men are going to die, he's going to die with them. And so when they stormed Fort Wagner, he was in the front line. Most commanders stood back on the hill and watched their men fight, because you don't want to lose your commander, theoretically. The commander has to stay alive, because if you kill the head, you kill the body. That's why they killed Dr. King, that's why they killed Malcolm X, that's why they killed John Kennedy. So you kill the head first. They said, now if my men are going to die, I'm going to die. So. Robert Gould Shaw takes the charge, he leads his men, he gets the first bullet through the heart, he dies right on the spot. The magnanimity of the black community of Washington, D.C. names their historic 
neighborhood after a white guy.